Now, another question, given that our strategy from our, their peaks have dropped anywhere from 60 to 80 uh, percent since February of 21, so this has been almost two years, why do we not turn defensive like most managers are doing. This year has been the most difficult year of my career, worse than 08, 09, and I would venture to say that it has been the most difficult year of many investors' career. Since her investment management company ARK Invest posted incredible results in 2020 and the beginning of 2021, renowned American hedge fund manager Kathy Wood has become one of the most carefully watched investors. Sadly, Kathy and her company have not had a good two years after that. However, Kathy is still as passionate as ever about disruptive innovation and technology. In a recent broadcast, Kathy discusses why she is confident that 2023 will mark the beginning of a new ball cycle and why her belief in innovations, like blockchain technology, genetics, and robotics has only become stronger. Additionally, just a small portion of my viewers actually subscribe, so if you like finance-related stuff, think about liking or subscribing, it's free. Now, another question, given that our strategy from their peaks have dropped anywhere from 60 to 80 percent since February of 21, so this has been almost two years, why do we not turn defensive like most managers are doing? Well, there's a, a very important explanation for that. We do one thing. We do not uh, pretend to be an asset allocator. We are research and our investment investments are centered on disruptive innovation. And so uh, when advisors and individuals choose our strategy, they're not uh, choosing it alone. They have more diversified portfolios, of course, including real estate. Uh, the biggest asset most consumers have is housing. So we are one part of an investment portfolio. And uh, therefore, we would uh, never be uh, using cash. We would expect advisors and individuals to basically raise cash and segregate it from their investment portfolios. In terms of our strategies, we during downturns concentrate towards our highest conviction names. And so we have been doing that now for uh, nearly two years. And the history, history would suggest that that concentration strategy plays out very well in the subsequent rebounds. Uh, and we do think this rebound will be quite powerful. This year has been the most difficult year of my career worse than 08, 09, and I would venture to say that it has been the most difficult year of many investors' career. Uh, the only thing that worked this year was energy. It's up almost 50%, and many people are asking us, why don't we diversify into energy since it's working? Well, the reason for that is we think it will stop working. Uh, if our uh, forecasts for electric vehicles and autonomous taxi platforms are correct, then oil demand could drop by roughly 30%, 30 million barrels a day during the next five to 10 years. And we believe that demand destruction uh, has already started. It looks like uh, oil demand peaked in 2019 and we're still in the process of uh, peaking out, I would say, in the 100 million barrels per day range. But we think the resolution of that basing period here is going to be down. Uh, so we wouldn't uh, be investing in energy. And we think the indexes that have rebalanced and now are including more energy are mistaken. And those investments, that rebalancing will not work out. Now, another question. You have been buying more Tesla and other stocks during the downturn, and yet the prices have fallen further and our performance decline has worsened. Uh, with interest rates and prices uh, fluctuating so widely, and in, in this case, they probably mean increasing, will an investment focus on innovation work? Well, we believe that the leading indicator, correctly, is inflation, and it, the inflation rate has peaked. Uh, almost uh, 
every measure of inflation has peaked. Most of those uh, metrics peaking out in March or June uh, of this year, in the first or the second quarter. Uh, so typically, that's a, a, a good thing for innovation. Uh, but as I just mentioned, I think the market is so skittish and has been so terrorized by the most rapid increase in interest rates ever. We have never seen an 18-fold increase in interest rates within one year. It has truly terrorized the markets. And uh, I think that the fear is palpable. In fact, I think according to the Bank of America surveys, recent surveys, we haven't seen this amount of cash on, on the sidelines since uh, I think it was 2006, maybe even 2001. I do know also the same survey shows that the put to call ratio uh, in the US market, meaning, um, those short relative to those long uh, puts, calls, um, is at 1.5 now, and it has not been that high since 2001. We have an incredible amount of fear in the market, and that actually is the best time to average into these markets. Uh, I remember in uh, late 20, early 21, we could do no wrong. Anything we said was uh, gospel at the time, and, and I knew that that wasn't right. And at the time, remember, I remember saying, keep some powder dry. It is for these moments, or averaging down throughout a, a period like this, that one keeps the, uh, the powder dry. This period, it, seems to be the flip side of the late 90s. The late 90s was an irrational increase in tech stocks, uh, appreciation in tech stocks. It was incorrect. The technologies were not ready, and even if they were close to being ready, costs were way too high. So technology's not ready. We didn't get the cloud till 2006. We didn't get the big breakthrough in AI, deep learning until 2012. The cost for DNA sequencing, uh, 2.7 billion for one genome uh, back in uh, 2003. Uh, that number is down to $500 now. We are ready for prime time, and yet investors are doing the opposite of what they did during the late 90s. Uh, they are running away, running for the hills, running for their benchmarks and we think that innovation is going to pose a problem for the benchmarks. So you bet we think in innovation is going to work. We think it's going to work in a big way. We are ready for prime time for these five innovation platforms. Uh, another question, investors seem hesitant to invest now for long-term growth given supply chain uh, disruptions and the economic downturn uh, caused by rising interest rates. Why do we believe that now is a once-in-a-century investment opportunity? Well, a couple of reasons. Innovation solves problems, uh, and we have a lot more problems now, even more than during COVID. Corporations now experiencing margin pressure, and uh, we have individuals, consumers, perhaps worrying about their jobs. And when we get into a period like this, businesses and consumers are willing to change the way they do things and they embrace innovation innovative solutions to their problems now this once in a century is uh, is not an understatement more innovation platforms evolve at the same time ever uh, the closest is about a hundred years ago telephone electricity and automobile uh, interestingly back then uh, we were just getting over a pandemic the Spanish flu and over a war, World War I. And, uh, and at the same time, we were experiencing incredible innovation. Uh, and so very similar dynamics. And what happened? Inflation peaked in June of 20, uh, 1920 at 24%. Uh, and within one year, it was minus 15%. Uh, we think we're going to experience a, a mini version of that during the next year. And then what happened? We launched into the Roaring Twenties when uh, the, the stock market uh, uh, had, I believe it was, a compound annual rate of returns of 25% for the next eight years. 
uh, the Roaring Twenties. We think, we think we have a setup here for the Roaring Twenties, uh, and it is all around innovation. I'll see you in our upcoming video.